Good morning and welcome to the Killick & Co Market Update. This week we have the Extinction Rebellion protesters here in London and therefore it again feels quite topical to talk about climate change. So we've been having a look at some data from the International Energy Agency which shows on a global basis exactly where our carbon emissions are coming from. So if you have a look at this pie chart here you can see that 42% of our CO2 emissions are coming from power generation. And I don't think that's really a surprise to anyone. I think we all know that the fact that we are so dependent on fossil fuels is responsible for a large proportion of our CO2 emissions. So if we really want to bring those emissions down, then we need to think about how we generate our power in the future. And a lot of people do believe that over the next few years, we will move quite strongly towards renewable power. If you have a look at the second chart here, you can see that that is starting to happen. So this chart shows the percentage of our power that's coming from certain sources, and it goes all the way back to the 1800s. And you can see from this that we've already had two quite major energy transitions. So initially we were quite dependent on biofuels for 100% of our power. Then throughout the 1800s, we started to become more dependent on coal. Throughout the 1900s, we became more dependent on oil and gas. And now if you have a look at those little pink bars on the chart, you can see that some renewable power is starting to creep in. And it looks as though that's very much on an uphill trend. Now, some of this renewable power is coming from new energy startups in the wind and solar spaces, but a lot of it is also coming from the energy majors like BP and Shell, who are starting to move away from traditional fossil fuels towards renewable power. And that's really something we expect to see a lot more of in the future. Now we've had a fair amount of talk about a possible recession in the UK recently and actually this week we've had some fairly positive data that makes it less likely that we are going to have a recession in the UK in the near term. So if you bear in mind that a recession is two consecutive quarters of economic contraction. Now for the second quarter in the UK the economy did contract so we have been keeping a close eye on data for this third quarter to see what's happening with economic growth. Now for the month of July we actually had economic growth in the UK of 0.4%. For August, we did have a contraction, but only of 0.1%. And that data came out this week. That was slightly better than expected. And with that combination of 0.4% growth minus 0.1% contraction, that means we'd have to have a fairly negative September in order for that whole of the third quarter to be negative. Analysts don't think that is likely, and therefore most people now think it's unlikely that the third quarter will show an economic contraction. Therefore, we haven't had two consecutive quarters of contraction. Therefore, the UK looks likely to avoid recession for now. So that's quite good news, and that's perhaps one of the reasons why the UK market has gone higher this week. And finally this week, there does seem to be a sense of renewed optimism regarding the trade talks between the US and China. Next week, there are scheduled to be tariff increases on $250 billion worth of exports going from China into the US. Trump is planning on raising the tariff rate from 25% to 30%. However, ahead of that planned increase in tariffs, the US and China do appear to be engaging in talks this week. Now, it seems unlikely that we are going to have a complete comprehensive trade deal covering all the specified issues such as intellectual property rights. But some analysts do believe it's looking more likely that we will have some kind of partial deal and that perhaps that will enable us to not have the increase in tariffs that are scheduled to go ahead this week. So the optimism around these trade talks has caused the market to go higher this week. So you will have seen that the S&P 500 and also markets across Asia have moved slightly higher this week. So over the next couple of weeks, we will be keeping a close eye on the progress of these trade talks. Now, looking ahead to corporate reporting next week, it's looking fairly busier on the financial calendar. It's quite a big week for healthcare next week, and we have got results coming out from Johnson & Johnson, United Health, and Abbott Laboratories. That's it from us. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next Friday.